Well, we're joined in the studio now by a coordinator for Extinction Rebellion, Sarah Lunnan, alongside Vanessa Feltz. First, though, let's go live to Westminster where we can speak with Mahatia Pasha, an ITV news journalist who was on the train that protesters managed to scale. So, good morning to morning. you, Mahatia. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, you were inside. What did you hear? Yeah, so it was about 6.45am uh, this morning, I was on my way to work and uh, all of a sudden we got to Kennedy Town Station, the doors of the train had opened and we heard this loud thud on the roof of the train. Uh, the passenger alarm went off and uh, the uh, driver of the train made a quick announcement uh, very abruptly, almost uh, sort of second guessing himself as to whether or not he should make the announcement. Uh, at this point, we all, uh, a lot of uh, uh, commuters alongside myself, we left the train and we went to sort of investigate what was going on and we saw two protesters on the roof of the train uh, holding up a banner uh, which basically said um, business as usual equals death. Um, it, almost immediately people had gathered around and they were absolutely angry very noticeably, the crowd were uh, shouting and yelling. Um, within a few minutes, some people were throwing coffee cups uh, at the protesters. Uh, and then after about 10 or 15 minutes or so, um, it got to the stage where uh, a lot of the commuters had just had enough. Uh, they jumped up onto the train and dragged down uh, one of the protesters and, and, and proceeded to attack him. And so obviously you could see there's an awful lot of anger there, but there would have been a, a lot of commuters who would have been very fearful and, and panicked by this also. Uh, I think that's right to say when I was there, I did see um, one woman who was uh, crying. She was noticeably quite uh, traumatised by the event. Uh, a lot of people kind of moving back, trying to take shelter. At what point even uh, uh, something made of glass was thrown at the top of uh, the train, which shattered. Um, so it, it, it was quite scary and there were some people who were uh, clearly quite frightened. Um, but I must say the TfL staff member that was there, there was only one that I saw and a few others that were around were doing their absolute best to try and stop any sort of carnage from taking place uh, and they did a really good job and um, police were, were uh, arrived uh, shortly after that. So you as indeed pretty much I would have thought everyone else on, uh, on that tube is concerned were on their way to work, um, uh, setting about their daily lives. I think one little girl missed, missed a ballet exam. Um, and so, um, so what did you think about having your day disrupted in that fashion? Well, I think because I'm a journalist I, I found the, the situation quite exciting and I went to sort of see what was going on and investigated it. But obviously for everyday uh, commuters, uh, a lot of people in Canning Town, um, in that particular part of East London, are from uh, working class backgrounds. They're working class people trying to get to work, make the daily bread. And I can completely understand why they would have been angry. I heard one person shouting, I'm just trying to get to work, I need to feed my family. And in my opinion, I think I I'm quite sympathetic to the climate change cause. I'm quite sympathetic to civil disobedience as well. I think throughout history, it has been adopted at a strategy which has been used quite successfully. If you look at the suffragettes, for example, if you look at some of the black right activists in, in the US, for example. But I think uh, Extinction Rebellion have really missed a trick here. What they've done is actually antagonised and annoyed a lot of the working class people that were here when they really should have been focusing their efforts on trying to bring them on board. All right, thank you, thank Mahathir. You. Thank you very thank much you. indeed. Sarah Lennon is, uh, is here from Extinction Rebellion. Um, why the tube? Why the cleanest way to travel across the, uh, the capital? So, uh, one of the points of this particular action is to identify the fragility of the systems that we're currently working with, the fragility of our transport systems. Well, we uh, all know that on a daily basis. Systems. If there's a power cut, we know it's fragile. We know that. You don't need to prove that to us. What you've done is you've stopped ordinary people going to work. Some of them, uh, workers who, were, who will, their, their families will depend on an hourly rate by the money that, that they make. You've essentially, you have heard Mahatia say that one person saying, I just want to, I just want to get to work. So haven't you surely shot yourself in the foot? So I really understand the level of disruption that this action of, has caused and in no way do I want to minimise it and the huge impact that even a small amount of disruption can have but on all people's the, the lives. But people many people on that So, Philip, tube... would you like me to answer your question or would yeah, well, you, you just like think... to talk over me? No, 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 no. Well, no, there's no, no, no reason to get like that. I mean, we've got a lot to get in now and you've actually made that point, unless you want to make it multiple times. But I, I wonder whether or not... Uh, as we're talking about the actual tube itself, a lot of people said that they got off that tube and then got into gas-guzzling taxis. So the point of this action is not necessarily to have a beneficial environmental impact with this particular action. The point of this action is to highlight the disruption that is going to happen to our very, very fragile systems 
everything in our modern day lives depends on clockwork and they are incredibly vulnerable to shocks and that shock might be extinction rebellion climbing on top of the roof or it might be a massive unpredicted weather event and those shocks are going to come more and more and more and today we have highlighted the impact that our changing weather is going to have on our lives it's not just transport it's, it's also power and it's also food. It's going to be empty supermarkets, it's going to be power systems turned off, and it's going to be our transport I understand. Um, there were um, sort of further actions uh, that were planned to take place. And when you look at the, the website today, it said they will not be conducting any further actions involving the London Underground today. Is that sort of an admission that you've got it wrong this time? So I don't think we've got it wrong necessarily because today I'm sitting in this studio and we've been bumped three times from this morning's studios in the last 10 days. And it's taken us being this disruptive to get on your programme... Is that to why you talk did it? About, <laughs> ..to talk about the emergency that we're facing. And the science is really hard to understand. I really get that. It's hard to see how this planetary emergency is going to impact our everyday lives. We... And it's going to be transport, it's going to be food... Yeah, you said that. I don't, I don't I want to interrupt you, but you are making the same point twice. Um, so, so that man glued himself onto a, to an electric train this morning for his grandchildren and so that you could get on this morning. <laughs> Not so that we could get on this morning, obviously, but unless we do very, very disruptive actions, people do not want to talk to us. They do not want to talk about the emergencies we're facing, which is why you bumped us. Uh we just weren't newsworthy enough. The emergency we're facing was not newsworthy enough, and so you talked about something else. But now I'm sitting here and I can talk to all of those people who watch this programme yeah. to talk about the risk I that have they're to, facing. I've got, to, I've got to ask you, though, about these methods, and there are a vast... I am, we are hugely sympathetic. Yes, we're all massively concerned. We want to do, to do our bit. We, we want to support you. Um, as Mahatia said, through history, it's only the brave that have, that have taken those big steps that have made changes. We understand that. But there was violence this morning. Um, and if you start to target ordinary people going to work to earn a crust, then someone's going to get hurt. your analysis may very well be right. Somebody may well get hurt. And the, the activists today realised the risks that they were facing. But as an act of conscience, they felt that they had to do that to highlight the risks that those ordinary people are facing right now and the lack of action from our government to protect and defend them from those risks. We are watching life on Earth dying. It's not about being passionate. It's not about supporting the cause. It's about whether you want a future yeah. for your children. It's that serious. Mm -hmm. Well, Vanessa, you've been speaking about this all morning on your radio show. I have, and so it's quite a good way of taking the temperature, particularly of how Londoners feel about this, although people phoned in from all over the country. And certainly at the beginning of the Extinction, Re Extinction Rebellion protest, we had lots of calls from people saying, look, they really are disrupting my life. I'm stuck in traffic. I can't get to my hospital appointment. You know, as you say, I can't get to my exam. I'm thoroughly fed up, but I broadly say support them. I see what they're doing. It's for all of us. We get it completely. And though it's an absolute royal pain, we are broadly supportive. I think that the temperature changed today. That's what it felt like. Mm. Suddenly, these were people, many of them, who are in the gig economy. They only get paid for the hours they do. If they're late for work or they don't get there at all, they don't earn any money today. And I think that they, the frustration boiled over. And also, there is a feeling, I think, at least that's what I'm picking up from some listeners, not all, of course, but some saying, we don't necessarily Necessarily want to be told how to feel. We don't necessarily want Extinction Rebellion or, or anybody to be our conscience. You know, we can feel well, for our, ourselves. But we I, can but, I mean, make you've got to disagree with ourselves. those people and say, look, you can't blindly travel forward. This is our planet, you know, and, and there is, there is, out without question, there is an enormous crisis. Certainly there is. And I think that, that there's, a, as you say, everybody wants the planet to be safe. Everyone wants, one wants it to be clean. Everyone wants children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to flourish. Of course we all do. But it's a question of how some people inflict or impose or insist upon putting their views in the lives of other people and then disrupting so them. Does this... I wonder if there's a tolerance point, maybe. I'm... Does this continue now? I mean, it, 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 will this carry on and on and on until you feel the, the point is heard? So the crisis we're facing is not going to go away. It's not about whether people are sympathetic to Extinction Rebellion. It's about whether our government takes action to protect and, and defend us. And until they us. do, will we be facing morning commutes like this for the 
future. So if you recognise, if you're educated to the, to the facts, and I understand the science is really hard to grasp and understand, if you're educated to the vulnerability of what we are facing, if you understand that, mm -hmm. if you recognise the really grave future mm -hmm. that, we've, that we are facing, how can you stop? So, so it... just, to, just to answer Holly's question, will you be doing this again? Will your, will your um, uh, supporters be standing on the roof of tube trains again? I can't say whether people are going to stand on tube trains or not because Extinction Rebellion is organised as separate operating groups. So I have no say over what those uh, separate groups are going to do, what action they're going to take. Mm. So I can't say to you, yes, they will. I can't say to you, no, they won't. I've got to say that's another thing that some people take issue with, the yeah. idea there's no central organisation. Mm. So nobody's ever the spokesperson for the whole organisation. Mm. Yeah. So you can no, say, I, I don't really know no. what they're going to do and I don't know they're I... all separate factions and people I am don't here. like that very much. I am here representing Extinction Rebellion, mm -hmm. but I'm explaining to you how, how we operate as a decentralised organization can i just and ask I one honestly question saying, though. you may Let, let's it. imagine no, but let's imagine you're one of the commuters this morning and let's imagine you really are sympathetic to the cause you're trying not to use single-use plastic you maybe you're a vegan a vegetarian you don't use many air miles you know you don't you don't you don't travel abroad you you're trying to you bicycle lots of time you take public transport today you're doing the best you can and then there's one of your members on the train stopping them getting to work how are they supposed to feel you see they're doing their very best Final already answer. maybe well I, I think those people would recognize that what we need is system change and it doesn't rely on us as individuals to do the right thing we need a system that allows us to live well mm. and not harm mm. the planet Thank you very much indeed Thank for, uh, for you, coming Vanessa. in. And uh, uh, we ran a poll this morning uh, which said, after the scenes on the London Underground this morning, do you consider Extinction Rebellion a help or a hindrance? And 95% today said a hindrance, 5% say help. Thank you very much indeed.